Very right. opinionated. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, okay, you, you talk a little bit. I'll talk a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're, you're a little bit so I just wanted to check everything out, make sure it was uh, I'm a little. I'm still a little froggy this morning from... Uh, I cleaned um, my closets out and a few other things over the weekend, and this dust just really gets to me. I should have called you earlier. I wish the heck I would have thought to look at the phone. Yeah, well, that's all right. I know. Yeah. So, you know, so you, you were saying, what, you came out of the closet or something? What were you saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I came out of the closet with a dust mop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, re- you ready for this? I don't know if I am, but anyway, talking to <laughs> it's talking to We're talking with Don Anderson, who uh, oh came, recently came out of the closet with yeah, a, yeah, right with the dust mop. Yeah. Well, you know, you look for things to do during this <clears throat> this frigging pandemic or whatever they call it, and so you got to clean a few closets, and it's been too cold to go outside and do anything. Yeah. Up, you know, yeah. garden or anything. Yeah. I mean, today I was going to do some raking and stuff. It's thirty four degrees. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Mother's Day, you know, we had kids come over, you know, of course, we had to stay outside. And, you know, it's the wind was so bad, <laughs> we we couldn't visit for longer than maybe, I don't know, two minutes, maybe, if that. Sure. And then the sure. kids said, okay, I'm freezing now, I got to get back in the car, you know. Yeah. But, uh, and then the, the wind, it sounds like, uh, I don't know, it sounds like, you know, we got hurricanes coming or something now, I don't know. It's it amazes me. It amazes me. This COVID virus it can even, you know, sustain itself in Michigan. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, we can barely sustain ourselves ourselves, but you know. That's right. Of course, I talked to my brother down in Kentucky. He's got the same thing. That state's almost as cold as we are, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah. Told, yeah. Snow in the UP. I mean, I, it's just it's like, <laughs> okay, spring. Well, hello. we we used to live up by the Cadillac area. And, and a friend of ours posted on Facebook they had looked like an inch or two of snow out in their yard. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And that ain't UP. <laughs> well, we did have we did have I think Mother's Day was it Mother's Day or day before Mother's Day? I don't remember. Anyway, it was we had like a just a quick sprinkle of snow here in yeah. flurries in the air. Yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And I'm getting so tired of trying to wipe everything off. I think I told you before. Um, my wife dearly loves McDonald's lattes. And I even more love their strawberry shake. So we bent here a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, and eh, we broke. We went through the drive through You know, we're not doing that any, anymore these yeah. days. Although I read that this stuff probably isn't transmitting through transmitted through food or food covering. Have you seen the same thing? Yeah, yeah, it is, it, yeah. So we order our our uh, latte and our strawberry shake, you know, and I think I'm going to be pretty ingenious with this. So I carry a a cloth with me in the car and this big jug of spray Clorox. <laughs> so I spray down the, the uh, <clears throat> pretty much the inside of the car, it seems, but I sprayed down the cloth and we got the order in. I've got my gloves on, I've got my mask on, and I said, well, I'll really, really take care. So I take and I, unknown to my wife, wipe, quickly wipe off the entire outside of the latte container. Well, I kind of got too much on, I guess, because it kind of pooled in the top of the plastic thing, you know, where you... <laughs> Pool? It pooled yeah. in the top? Well, wow. We got, we got lots of the spray. <laughs> so, I handed it to my wife. I guess she wasn't paying attention, you know, and pretty much I, I look over and she's got this really, you know, it looks good kill on her face, <laughs> followed by a slight scream. And <laughs> she yeah. tasted this crap. <laughs> Clorox laden latte. Yeah. Mm. So we, we we take them into the house, and I figure well, that's enough of that. So I take her latte and I dump it into a regular cup, you know, so that she doesn't have to use that that uh, virus laden. <laughs> and I I take and I get a, a glass out of the cupboard so I can dump my shake in as well. Problem is those shakes have about what sixteen twenty ounces, and I get an eight ounce. I got this stuff all over the counter. <laughs> I mean, it just it didn't work. And we're having so many of those things happen. You know, stupid yeah. little... Yeah. You, you, th- you think maybe um, we're being overcautious, but somebody told me if you think you're being overcautious, you're probably doing just about right. Yeah, so, yeah. 
<laughs> well, you know, it, there's little things too on Facebook that drive me crazy too. Is and I and I get into them, and I don't know why. I should just leave them alone. But I can, yep. I, I got to say something. I don't know why. I just can't shut up. But anyway, there was uh, the one person talking about the mask, and I'm not going to that store because they want me to wear a mask. It's like, well, that's what the governor kind of wanted you. Anyway, there was that was one, and then there was another one that was talking about uh, rubber gloves. You know, well. I like to wear rubber gloves because um, if I t- try to use, I went to the store the one time and I just used sanitizer on my hands every time. Every t- time I did anything, I used sanitizer. Well, my hands got so bad and cracked, and they're still they're still all cracked and look like you know, I look kind of like like a scary mummy hand or something. I don't know what, but you know, and so I can't really just do the sanitizer. And I so when I go out, I usually go to what maybe three places. So I said, well, I'll, you know, use my latex gloves and I still use a sanitizer on the gloves. So I don't use the same. It's not really using the gloves at each place because I, I clean them with sanitizer. Well, then it's, they were getting an argument with me that, well, you wear the latex off. I'm thinking I, I, I do it two or three times. I mean, then I throw the glove away, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, uh-huh. I'm not, you know, like scrubbing the crap out of them to, you know, take the latex off the glove. Anyway, and and if I did, I'd throw that glove away and put another one on, you know. Sure, it, sure. I mean, you get a hundred of them for like six bucks. I mean, come on, you know. Right. Anyway. It's, inter- it's interesting, too, Oscar, the way some stores are enforcing these rules and some aren't. You know, you can walk into some stores with people walking around, no masks on and so oh, yeah. forth. And walked, I went out to Menards a couple of weeks ago and, walked in with my mask on, and everybody seemed to have masks on, and I found out why, because they have these two signs on either side of the entrance. You cannot enter by order of the governor or yeah, some yeah, yeah. you know, without a mask on. So right. I'm standing inside, and I'm looking around, everybody's got their masks on, and sure enough, here comes this little old couple in, and they didn't have masks on. They looked at the placard, the sign, kind of looked at each other, they kind of slowly, you know, stumbled through. They were really having some trouble walking. They would not let them in. Yeah. And they, they turned them away. I was kind of surprised at that. But, you know, yeah. they have. I think they have um, proclamations coming down from the corporate that say, you know, we're not going to be sued for liability, so don't let anybody in. But I, I walked, I went, into, I went into another store, which I won't mention because <laughs> I don't want to get sued about it because... They didn't really enforce the law because they had they had this, the exact same sign on the front, and uh, I went in there with my mask on, of course, and there must have been, I don't know, 15, 20 people that I passed that did not have masks on. So it's like, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. Don't yeah. know what to say. Well, what's going to happen after this whole thing is over, hopefully it's over eventually, uh, when somebody walks into a bank with a mask on? Yeah. Yeah. Are you here What's to it? rob it or just practicing safe? Well, you know, masking? you got you and you and your wife got those brand new masks that somebody made for you, and you, you put a picture up on uh, Facebook. And I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking Bonnie and Clyde, man. You look look yeah. like just like Bonnie and Clyde. They're kind of funny. You can't tell if somebody's smiling or growling at you. Right, either. right. So you know, <laughs> you cannot shave for whatever, and just you know, you yeah. going whatever way you look. It doesn't matter. Put a minute, put a baseball you cap on. You're good to go. Right, and the minute you put those things on, of course, what itches but your nose right. or your cheek or something. Well, you know, the worst thing with, with people like me with glasses is that you put them on and then your glasses steam up, you know. So so then you're walking, oh, yeah. around, you're yeah. walking around blind, you know. I'm oh. trying to work out in the yard the other day, and I've got my mask on because there were people around out in the front. And so I don't keep my mask on. And I have asthma and allergies, so it's kind of a common thing that I do. I put my sunglasses on because we had one day of sunshine <laughs> last month. And they all steam up. You know, like you say, you yeah. can't see. Yeah. Nothing. I'm just, I'm just so. picturing you with sunglasses on and a mask on. <laughs> it just... Well, then I had a baseball cap on, and it's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah, there you go. That's what I do. <laughs> Nobody knows who I am. <laughs> oh, but we'll, we'll get through it. I'm not sure how sometimes, but uh, we yeah. will. Yeah, yeah, I guess. So, uh, so what else is new in the in the life of Don Anderson? Not much is new with me, but I see that you finally shaved. Yeah, I did, but I I'm letting it grow back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, you know, we didn't talk about that. We didn't be in our pre-screening, which we never have. Yeah. So I don't. Know if I was supposed to ask you about that or not? But yeah, you look uh, you look different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
The wife, my, the wife said, you know, to shave it off because it was all gray, and then she said it'd make you look younger. But then she, after a couple of days, she kind of said, you can grow it back now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what does that tell you? Yeah, I know. It's like, cover that face, please. It's like, okay. Yeah. But now yeah. I, I, I liked it because it covered the uh, the turkey neck, you know, it kind of hid that there a little know. bit. So They do do that. I haven't grown one in 30 years probably. <laughs> And I tried here a couple of months ago, and I said, no, I can't do that. It just itches too much. But oh, there's yeah. not a whole lot new. I'm reading all kinds of things about, you know, broadcasting and radio and jingles and stuff on Facebook, as you probably do. And I spend an inordinate amount of time doing that. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, listening to music. I've uh, Hoopla. I think I told you about that before. Hoopla from the, mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. library. You can get that. And mm-hmm. They ended up uh, giving, like... Uh, I was at 99, 99 things a month you could get or whatever. So I, you know, I pretty much watched the movies that they had to offer. There wasn't a whole lot there that I, I wanted, but um, they had all kinds of great music on there that I haven't heard for years. So I've been listening to that and, of course, you know, stealing it by putting in and <laughs> recording it. But, you know, yeah. But uh, speaking yeah. of music, you, speaking of music, Oscar, you seem to dispute my pick for the original king of rock and roll and that's what i want to talk to you about today because I'm, okay i want to be talking and to paul phillips too who is also an aficionado of uh, old music you know enlighten me well i see i don't know that's what that was the question i don't really know i don't really know who they consider the king of rock and roll of course everybody says elvis presley but you know chuck berry i mean i i i always thought he was kind of the king of rock and roll he kind of you know but then again, I guess he really never had a hit until the same time as right around the same time as Elvis Presley did. I don't think it matters if he had a hit or not. It's the influence. Yeah, and I think he had more influence than Little Richard even. But then again, mm-hmm. Little Richard was, was quite the rocker too. I mean, that guy could, well, he would go on for 20 minutes on one song. I mean, when he was live performing and jump on his piano. And I mean, he was all over the place. That guy was, was a big time performer. Of course, so was yeah. Chuck Berry, you know. As I boldly stated on Facebook, Arthur Godfrey is my pick. <laughs> Why Arthur Godfrey? Well, because he was the king of rock and roll, the old beer barrel polka and things of that. You had the rock and roll with <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, okay. Huh. All right. Roll out the barrel. No, my, <laughs> <laughs> roll me over after a few barrels. Yeah. I would go with uh, Chuck Berry, I think. Yeah, I think so. That's, that's what I, my pick is, kind of, too. I mean, it just seems like Chuck was kind of the original the original creator of all that good that good uh, guitar licks and stuff like that. Of course, then again, there's also Fats Domino. You know, he was in there pretty mm-hmm. early, too. But Yes, uh, he was. I think if you read some of the narratives or the anthologies or whatever you want to call it from Elvis, you'll find that he will liken back to Chuck Berry as well, I think, uh, as far as an influence. Oh really? See, I've I've never heard I that. So. so yeah, I I I, I know the pretty, Beatles. I could, be confu- I could be confusing, you know, things. Well, I know the <laughs> I know the Beatles. Did. To do. The the Beatles were were big Chuck Berry fans and and mm-hmm. you know stuff like that. But that was later on in the '60s. So yeah, well, so he got all kinds of people out of the '50s, like Carl Perkins. Those were rockabillies. That, right. Uh, Heavily yeah. influenced on rock and roll. Yeah, a lot of people don't know Blue Suede Shoes was was a hit by Carl Perkins before. Carl Perkins, yeah, exactly. Before Elvis, and it was a bigger mm-hmm. hit. It was actually a bigger hit by Carl, but they kind of associate that with Elvis. So, right, because he was the big star. Yeah, yeah, and so, rightly so. Yeah, no, I know. I'm not take, trying to take away anything away from Elvis, but I'm just saying no. that I I do think that you know. I don't know <laughs> what I think. I do think Chuck Berry was the first of rock and roll, though. That's for sure. So I can't think of somebody that you know preceded him that was as big, uh, had as big an in- impact on his history and and the rock that we you know have known for the last fifty, sixty years. Yeah, and you know the other thing about Chuck Berry that I was talking to Paul about that I didn't know he was in prison for a while too. So he got kind of he was kind of uh, away for a while. He could have been making some rock and roll then but he was in prison that's true, so. mm-hmm. that's true. but uh yeah chuck was i remember that i wish i could find it again there's a documentary on chuck berry it's not it's it was done by uh, um keith richards from the the stones and and he 
wanted to do this big show with with Chuck Berry, you know, coming out and, and doing his, his music again and wanted Chuck Berry to, you know, really perform well and, and do and Chuck Berry's like, Man, I just play my guitar and they just follow along, you know. And that was just Chuck Berry. He just you know, he did his own thing. So I read that in his later performing years he would show up at a gig and he had no band. He had his guitar right. and that's it. Yeah. He'd plug it in. They would have some musicians from the local area. He'd say, "Let's uh, let's do it in A minor or B flat or whatever the chord was," and off they'd go. Yeah, yeah. That that was the story. There was a story I heard by by uh, actually Bruce Springsteen said that because he got to be part of the 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 Finland band for Chuck Berry one time, and that's what he said. Chuck Berry just looked at him and said, uh, "Play Chuck Berry tunes." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that there was you it. go. There you go. So. My favorite Chuck Berry tune, and I'm sitting here with uh, a brain infarction, but the scene from Pulp Fiction, where Uma Thurman is doing the twist. Oh, yeah. What's the name of that tune? No particular place. Or... There you go, yeah. yep. I love that song, and I oh, love yeah. the movie. Yeah, there's okay. there's some there's some pretty, pretty um, amazing... Well, you know, not only were there great rock and roll tunes that Chuck Berry did, but it was also um, very... Um, I don't know, very well written, you know. I mean, they were, they were um, I don't know, just great songs. They had great words and, and great music. I mean, mm-hmm. it was, it's kind of was kind of hard to find back in the 50s to have great great lines and great words, you know, as far as words go. It was just basically, oh, sure. baby, I, I mean, love I love you, you love me, let's go sit around a tree. You know I mean? That was kind of it. Scintillating lyrics like, how much is that doggy in, in the, the window? window? There you go. Arf, arf. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, um, I don't know if we talked about it when you were talking about that. We were talking about my background uh, some time ago, but I was one of those, and I've heard several of the people that you have interviewed say the same basic thing. I was like eight, nine, ten years old, and I had my own little record player, and I used to spin 45s and use a potato peeler or something uh, as a microphone and pretend an ounce. Okay, yeah. Never forget that. You know, songs like, uh, well, Dog in the Window, I think uh, Patricia, uh, Prez Prado, Delicato. Huh. Remember stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. You know what You know what I did? <laughs> of course, I'm a kid of the 70s. What I, what I did, uh, uh, me and Randy, Randy and Mike and, and Kevin, friends of mine from, from school, um, I had this big, ugly reel-to-reel that I got working again, <laughs> and uh, we used to record stuff, and then we would put it in like slow motion or speed it up or whatever, and do different things that way, and then mm-hmm. and then we'd go through the whole routine the, of the all the albums that I had bought by uh, Cheech and Chong. So there you go. <laughs> so I can do any kind of Cheech and Chong one for you that you want. That was that was my kind of thing, but. I, yeah, I, I kind of listen to all the the radio stations. I, of course, I'm a, I'm a child of the FM. You know, I, I, oh, Ralph. You know. oh Ralph, I love the texture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm kind of a child of the FM because I mean, I was in you know in Detroit area. That was that was kind of the big thing in the early '70s was the FM when it came out and playing uh-huh. album cuts and all that kind of thing. You know, so. Oh, I was I was right there, but I wasn't so much a child of it. I was a purveyor of it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, TRU was kind of the purveyor of it. Yeah, yeah. So, TRD was the one that um, really laid the groundwork for FM in this area, along with Wood FM. Yeah, yeah. You know, those two, you put them together, and you've got almost uh, probably over ninety percent of the listeners in the area. Yeah, the and then it was LAV too. Was was, was huge. Oh yeah, so, yeah. yeah. They into it sure when they kicked in with the FM, but yeah. So yeah, it's it's been it's been a fun ride. <laughs> I feel like my journey is over. Uh, well, did we ever talk about Bobby Bear? Um, no, I don't think so. You, you know Bobby Bear? Oh yeah, yeah, I love Bobby Bear. Five hundred miles, and yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Detroit Bobby City. Was, pardon? I said Detroit City. Great right. Well, Bob, I'll tell you about that. Bobby was um, Skip Knight. And Ron Tindall used to book Bobby into um, the armory for the kids downtown Muskegon. And at the same time, after the armory dance, he would play at clubs like Club Safari, which is uh, like the corner of Laketon and uh, the Seaway Drive, I think. Huh. 
And at any rate, uh, Bobby would play in those clubs, and he'd play, like I say, at the Armory. And, of course, the uh, the stations in Grand Rapids and GRD would, uh, in Muskegon, true, would hike the heck out of his records. He had four strong wins, and he had Shame on Me, which is my fav- favorite. Shame all on me, yep, yep. Love the song with the horns. And... But um, one night, Bobby was playing at uh, the Club Safari, and we all went to see him. Uh, this is probably about 19, wow, 63, something like that. And Bobby invited a bunch of us down to somebody's house where he was staying on Lake Michigan, um, uh, down at Pier Marquette, right at the Ovals. Hmm. Of course, every time we drive down there, I'll say to my wife, see that house? She says, yeah, I know. You sat up all night and listened to Bobby Bear playing songs. Huh. Um, but we, we stayed up this one particular night. And as I recall, Bobby was strumming Detroit City and playing with the lyrics. You know, that song came out in 1964. Oh, okay. A year before. And all of a sudden, here I am, afternoon uh, jock on True one day, and Skip Knight brings in this record. He says, what do you think of this? And I looked at it, I just threw it on the turntable and played it, and it was Detroit City. And I said, I've heard that before. Huh. It was just the just the, uh, the most surreal feeling because uh, were- Bobby had from certain of those chords and he had a little he was playing around with the tune and so forth and I guess they were working on it back then and you know the story everybody I think knows the story about uh, uh, the all-american boy oh yeah yeah Bobby had uh, been drafted into the army <clears throat> excuse me and I guess that um, I can't remember his record label but they had bought the rights to uh, the song all-american boy Bobby goes into the service there sits the demo on a desk for the song they wanted to release it, but Bobby's in the service, so they couldn't use his name. So they got a guy by the name of Bill Parsons right. uh, to front the song, and there, there it went. And it was actually Bobby Bear, and it, it was a big hit. Now, how did that work, though? They, he fronted the song, but he didn't sing the song. So, I mean, what? Oh, no, Bobby. It was Bobby's voice on right. the song. Right. So, I mean, who was this Bill Parsons guy? Just a guy that they found in the studio that was a singer that they used to, uh, to like, like I say, uh, front the record, go out and perform it, and say that it was his song. Huh. To promote it. You know, they'd take him out on the road, and here's Bill Parsons with All-American Boy. Well, nobody could tell the difference. No. Uh, in those days with the sound and so forth. Yeah, and it had. wasn't exactly a real singing song either. He kind No, of, yeah. no. It's more of a monotone, yeah. whatever you call it. Yeah talking type song but there, there was a guy yeah. that there was a guy that hired me when i worked back at the uh the muskegon harbor hilton um i don't know how many 1980 something and um he he was part of the the business and he was hiring the djs and he he was hiring me and he talked to me about stories about the past and he was he i forget what band he said he was in but he was in one of those bands with the one hit wonders and they said mm-hmm. that you know well like you you know they they used to put these people in buses they all had the they had the one hit wonders and they would go and perform with the you know the backing band a backing band and they'd all go up and do their one hit and you know get off and then the other guy would get do their one hit and get off and now is that something like what you used to book when you did your 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 beach thing we didn't uh we didn't have the luxury of uh booking in two or three of them at a time we were pretty much booking in solo groups oh, okay. uh, as like I told you before Dick and Dee Dee uh, Paul and Paula, that type of thing, they would lip sync the record, but we didn't have the facility. We didn't have the big enough stage, you know, to put the big bands on and so forth. Although, uh, we did at times, the stage was so crowded, we had a group out of Fort Wayne that used to come up fairly regularly. They were like the Beach Bass house band, uh, called The Boys Next Door. No, was that their name? <laughs> no. Something like that. I can't remember now. They were just a terrific uh, cover band. They would play all the top hits of the day and sound exactly like the records. Oh, okay. But as far as bringing in, you know, too many of the uh, the big groups uh, side by side, you know, you've got Mitch Ryder on the sa- stage or Bob Seger. You were pushing it, at least we were, because of the limitations of the uh, facility. Yeah. It would take you like an hour or two to tear them down and, you know, bring the next group up, but we just didn't have that uh, that means. Now, you know, Bob Seeger, that I was, I was, I put, I've been putting my these albums on Facebook. That my, my cousin challenged me to to put up albums that meant a lot to me in the day. Sure. And uh, Bob Seeger, of course, was, was one of my favorites, and I put a lot of his stuff up there. And uh, a friend of mine from high school had said that her uncle knew Bob real well so they used to party with bob all the time <laughs> you know it's like 
You were, hey, wait a minute. You were my friend from high school. You could have invited me over to meet Bob Seeger, you know. But he yeah. said he was a really nice guy. Now, when you booked him, did you get a chance to talk to him much? or uh, A little bit, you know, before and after. But, yeah, just a tremendous, as I recall, one of the nicer people that we had. Tommy yeah. James was one of those people that you could just talk to all night. Yeah. Uh, very down to earth. Very, very nice people. Yeah. Yeah. See, Bob Seeger, I, 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 it was my very first concert I ever went to at Pine mm-hmm. Knob. And, uh, you know, I was just a teenager. My sister brought both. Actually, I went with both of my sisters. It was kind of a unique experience over to Pine Knob. But, um, yeah, it was right, right in like 73, 74, I think, something like that. So, sure. But, you know, we didn't have a lot of time to really visit with the uh, acts we brought in. We had a very, very small, dra- it really wasn't a dressing room. It was an old utility room at the Grand Haven Roller Rink uh, that they would try to, you know, <laughs> dress in and get their uh, uh, their props and so forth. So we we just didn't have time to visit a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't that type of situation. But, you know, yeah. you get to talking with them, setting up a little bit and so forth. You can kind of tell the character of the people, I think, and, by and large, uh, I can't remember too many times where we were disappointed with, oh, man, that's what that guy's really like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like I say, the very few people that I've talked to, it's, it's always been like, it, it, it's, it's been a, a kind of an eye-opener because you, you think these people are, you know, above, above reproach, but they're just, just like everybody else, so, you know. Right, right. So, anyway. Anyway, yeah, I I still think it's cool though. You know, it was it was my it was kind of cool back in the day brushing with some greatness. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, as I told you before, we got some of these groups out of Detroit and before they were even great or just uh, yeah they were... yeah yeah. Well, like Bob so Seger. They... We'll go back to yep. Bob, Bob Seger. My my uh, one of my cousins. Um, remember, he told me one time that he went and saw Bob Seger over in Ann Arbor. Back before he was, you know, when he just I think he came out with like heavy music or something. But he was paying like two dollars for cover charge to go see his band at, you know, this bar in Ann Arbor. So, mm-hmm. sure. But, and now it's like one hundred and fifty. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> really. Well, now it's now it's not possible. But anyway, because uh, you know, with this pandemic, I don't know when the concerts are going to happen again. So, yeah, well, we're gonna bringing to it back to a sour note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. They're going to have to enlarge the stages so they all can accomplish, you know, the six, yeah. six foot uh, distance. I don't, I don't know, know how, what they're going to do. I really don't, until, until they come up with the with the vaccine, I really don't know what they're going to do as yeah. far as concerts yeah. it, go. I think we're living in a, this is more like the new normal until the vaccine is developed. And I think we got a year or so. This is kind of how uh, we live. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So I guess we'll have to make some designer masks. Hey, I was <laughs> speaking of masks. I gotta tell you this. My wife, <laughs> my wife thought I was nuts. I got these old uh, um, jogging pants, but they're all stretched out and old and everything else, you know. So I figured, well, I'll cut the leg off and put it that over my head because you know they got those things that go over. There. So, <laughs> so I cut the leg off and I cut it long enough, you know, and I pulled it over my head and it went to my nose and it and it was a little rough getting it on because it had the elastic around the end, you know. And uh, I could, if I would have tried to wear something like that, it would have cut all my circulation off of my head. I would have passed out. But uh, anyway, so I pulled this thing on my head, and I went up to my wife, and she just started laughing at me, like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> <laughs> you gave me an idea. Why couldn't you take an old pair of uh, of trousers, pants, slacks that had a zipper, and put the <laughs> put. <laughs> Cut it so that the mask, the zipper was, you know, like from the top of your nose down to your chin. So that <laughs> when, when you wanted a cough drop or you wanted to, you know, stick that uh, straw in your mouth from the, yeah, you zip the your uh, zipper down. Of your, I mean, that would work, wouldn't it? Uh, sure. Yeah, why That's not? That's a hell of an idea. Yeah. Okay. You can, why don't, if, why don't if, we patent that? Yeah, if we patent that, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll 50-50 with that one. Yeah. Good idea. Oh, no, it's your idea, so it should be all you. <laughs> Probably end up in the ER every time you caught your tongue. And... <laughs> yeah, that's not uh, a bad. I think I'm going to see if I got an old pair of jeans and see if my wife can't uh, fashion them. Well, you know the way everybody's gaining weight and stuff uh, during this whole thing. I suppose you know a pair of jeans are probably too tight on you anyway, so you can put them around right. your put them around your head. <laughs> I got jeans. <laughs> I got some jeans that would fit very well. I think. There you go. There you go. 
Oh, my. oh it's getting it's getting too much. Getting yeah. Too soon. <laughs> Uh, it'll be you know we'll see it on facebook uh, before we even get to do it uh, we'll see it on facebook somebody will have a zipper there just ready for that there was that there was that one thing where somebody made a mask out of a, a, a milk jug i saw that yeah and you you know you screw up the top and yeah. then you can put a straw through there and you know so i, could, I couldn't figure out how the guy breathes right yeah there was, I mean, there was no unless he breathes through his eye holes. eye holes yeah yeah so well i mean kind of like a mask too i mean you don't really have a whole lot of place to breathe there either so you look like an ant eater <laughs> yeah kind of kind of yeah but that was kind of i was gonna go i was gonna have to go work on that with my wife that uh, there you go different. well you know that's one thing about this this pandemic is that uh everybody's pretty much come up with some some new ways to do things you know and as far as you sure. know, business and everything they're gonna have to come up with all these different ways to to let people back in the business and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting yep i guess that's That'll a good a, word <laughs> interesting a, a slow re-entry that's what they're gonna have to take yeah and, yeah so anyway i just i just hope uh we i just I, i'm thinking we can recover from this because like i say i think there's a lot of innovative people out there that you know know how to how to, how to make the changes and make things work. So, and those will be the survivors. So, well, sir, <laughs> on your zipper note, I think we, <laughs> we've talked about just about as much as we're going to talk about here. <laughs> That's about all for today. <laughs> yeah. It's really pushing things out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've discovered who is the king of rock and roll. We're, we're both sticking with Chuck Berry. Yeah. Um, we we know that we don't put bleach on our our shakes at at uh, McDonald's. Okay. Right. Um, and little Bobby Bear secrets. Little Bobby Bear secrets. Yeah. Actually, um, uh, the boatman. I was. I think I was telling you about that. Chris Kraft. He he had an experience with the with the Bobby Bear too. Of course, that was when Bobby Bear was considered more country. You remember the song? Uh-huh. Remember the song he did, the Jogger. You remember that one? Uh, vaguely, it was a country song. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah, it was a country yeah. song. Yeah, he kind of yeah, went I lost after track. after Detroit City. He kind of came more country on the countryside. So right, right. He but, saw the light. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, is he he's still living? Isn't he, Bobby Bear? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard anything I, about him going. I think he's in the Country Music Hall of Fame or the Country Music Writers Hall of Fame. He has written a lot, a lot of songs. Of, yeah, a lot of songs. He I always liked Bobby Bear. You know, my of course the first one I ever heard by him was Detroit City, then later I heard the other stuff that he did. So mm-hmm. but, All right, man. You take care of yourself and uh stay Thank out of that cl- stay out of that dusty closet. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going back in. <laughs> I don't watch, like being out. <laughs> watch the amount of bleach you use. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Oscar. All right. Take care. Yep. Take All care. Right. Be be safe and healthy. Yeah. You too.